Our special interview on Impact Yobre this week is with the Honorable Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management in Yobe State, Dr. Abubakar Garba Elia. Welcome to the program, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you very much. Sir. Yes, this ministry is a creation of the Governor May Malabuni's um, administration. But what's the whole idea behind the creation of this ministry, this novel ministry? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management was established in December 2019, shortly after His Excellency was sworn in in May. Uh, uh, the, the ministry came, the government, the administration of Maimala Buni came under the uh, slogan of continuity, consolidation with innovation. And we also uh, uh, felt that we are managing an uh, insurgency recovery uh, program in your best state. And so one of the key ways to address the issues of this insurgency or Boko Haram is to ensure that we, we have a means and uh, ways of attending to our people that were devastated by Boko Haram. And so this informed the creation of this ministry to ensure that we take care of the the people that were completely devastated by 12 years of insurgency. This is the mission. Okay. And then resettlement, rehabilitation and reconstruction, you also pointed it out, is one of the key policies of this administration. How well so far has the, the ministry delivered on these um, mandates? I think so far so good. Uh, as you are aware, there is no uh, camp. There is no IDP camp in your best state, so to say. Most of our IDPs are within the host communities. And so the whole essence of this uh, triple R uh, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and resettlement is to ensure that we have our people resettled in their, their communities uh, to pursue their livelihood. And this, the ministry has done so, so well so far. Mm. And the state, of course, has witnessed a relative peace in recent times. But tell us more about emergency management. We know there are no IDPs and all of that, but there have been some cases, some emergency cases. How well has this ministry responded? Well, the, you know, the, the ministry has some few agencies under it, and one of, the th uh, one of the key agency under the ministry is the State Emergency Management Agency. The ministry, together with the State Management Agency, has been coordinating the activities of the NGOs, uh, the partners, the UN agencies, and so on and so forth. So in terms of emergency, we always coordinate the activities of all these agencies in the state. Take the case of Gaidam, for example. When Gaidam was sacked sometimes early this year, uh, all the agencies in Yobe state are coordinated by the ministry, uh, the UN, uh, UN OCHA, uh, other de development partners, all came together to ensure that this emergency situation uh, be, uh, came, into, uh, came under control. And that way, we managed to return the people of Gaidam back to the community. And sadly, that of uh, Kanama also came. And we still came together to fight the uh, emergency situation. And that is why you did not have any escalating problems at that time in Yobe State. There are so many humanitarian actors operating in Yobe State and indeed um, the North East. And you talked about coordination. But what kind of support are you getting from them? Because the state government is doing so much to ensure that everything, all their efforts are tailored towards improving the lives of the people and making the situation better. How are you doing this? How exactly are you coordinating and ensuring that everyone is on the same page and with the same agenda? I can give you one good example. <clears throat> the UN OCHA, for example, uh, was approached by this ministry to give us a capacity building. As we are aware, this ministry is new and all the staff were drawn from various ministries. Uh, of the state government. Most of us do not have a humanitarian background. And so UN OCHA, in collaboration with us, came to support the capacity building, gave us a training in, in Kano for one week. And I'm happy to note that most of my staff now have this background, a uh, humanitarian background. You know, it's not an easy thing. It's a new field, and uh, we've been doing very well. Uh, most agencies, NGOs, INGOs, come to Yobe State through the Ministry of Budget and Planning, sometimes through the uh, SSG's office. And I think they are beginning to understand that now that we have this ministry, 
we became the entry point into your best state. That way, we try to also uh, inform them of, well, first we need to know their budget, we need to know their portfolio, and what and what do they want to do in your best state. So part of the coordination is to ensure that they go to the appropriate places so that there's no duplication of uh, activities. Yes. Okay, and uh, we have seen natural disasters like flooding and all of that kind of um, maybe outbreak of diseases and all of that. We have seen some of that happen in some states, including your business, Charlie Flood. How are you ensuring people in those rural communities in need of relief? How do they get it or how do you get to them? Truly, there were floods in Yobe State this year. <clears throat> Just like last year, we have cases in Damatru here, uh, Jakusko, Bade, uh, Babangida, uh, Dabchi or Bursari, and so on and so forth. So what we try to do is to come together, like always, together with our partners to ensure that we, we reach the people that are vulnerable, the people that are devastated by this flood. And we have done that in, uh, of recent in Chakusko. We have done it in uh, uh, Jumbam. We've done it here in Damatru. We try to reach them because we have to put up uh, a team of assessment. They do the assessment. They look at their vulnerability. They look at the degree of vulnerability. And that way we try to reach those uh, affected communities. We've been doing so well so far. The governor promised to run an inclusive government. And of course, that includes um, attending to the needs of persons with disability, people living with disability. And I believe that is also under your purview, under the purview of this uh, ministry. How is the ministry targeting these people with your plans, policies, and programs? Um, of recent, we, we, we had to try to identify the number of people living with disability in the state. And I can tell you that as of today, we have in our record about 5,361 people living with disabilities in the state. So we are coordinating the uh, affairs of these uh, people uh, 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 gradually, and we are, we are trying to pick them uh, local government by local government. Of course, they are organized in all the local governments. They have leadership. And so we try to, to reach them gradually, and by God's grace, uh, we will try to reach almost all of them. Some of them we try to see if we can even uh, support their families because some of them have families and they, they they have to rely on begging in order to survive but i think we are working so hard to ensure that these people living with disability in your state are really cut out for okay. okay you know resettling um the internally displaced persons that we are at idp camps was actually a big deal but another issue now is the rehabilitation and what is the government doing to ensure that especially those who have lost their livelihood uh, help to get back on their feet? Well, I think we have, uh, <clears throat> uh, over the time, tried to identify uh, issues like uh, building their capacity first, uh, sensitizing them to go back to their communities. You know, it is not easy to even uh, tell someone who has been devastated for years to even go back to his community. So this sensitization has been going on. I give you a clear example uh, of the regional stabilization strategy of the Lake Chad Basin. When uh, the three, the four countries of the Lake Chad, Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, came together to see how they can tackle the issue of Boko Haram regionally. And so uh, under this regional stabilization strategy, they picked some key uh, communities that were seriously devastated by Boko Haram. And so in, in, in Nigeria and in Yobe State, they picked uh, Buniadi and uh, uh, Kanama. Uh, although they've not accessed Ka Kanama due to some ch security challenges, but what the, the R uh, RSS has done in Buniadi, for example, is a clear indication that the, the government is really concerned. They have rehabilitated schools, primary schools, re rehabilitated the police station. They have built some new markets, uh, shops and stores in Buniadi. And to, 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 to your surprise, in addition to building these stalls and markets, they are also trying to support these people with some startup packages, give them some, local, uh, some token amounts of money to start their business in order to ensure that their livelihood is restored. Mm -hmm. So this we are trying to generalize across the state. And the government is really doing that through the provision of uh, uh, livelihood support, such as the 
the small uh, ruminants uh, for rural women, cash transfer for rural women. Uh, uh, some of these things have been done uh, over the years and is supporting the, the communities to really settle down in their communities. Okay, you know, we started with um, the ministry, is a new ministry created by this administration that would be uh, about two years in December that I'm talking specifically about the ministry now. By the end of this administration, what is that's this first term? What is the goal for the ministry? What are some of your long term targets? Well, as you can see, <coughs> we are currently in uh, hosted by the office of the special advisors. We do not have an office, and we feel that by, before the end of the, the first administration, we should have a standard office for the ministry. One, two, we, we, we by then we should have also gotten some. Uh, operational vehicles that can go to any terrain within the state. Three, we must have built the capacity of the ministry. As a new ministry, we must have uh, gotten the capacity to run all humanitarian activities uh, in the state. And the level of our coordination also had to improve. So these are our long-term plans for for the next two years. And I wish you the very best as you continue your efforts to improve humanitarian affairs and disaster management in UBC. Thank you very much for your time on the program. Thank you, sir. thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you. That's all we have for you on today's episode of Impact Yobe. Don't forget to join us next week for a fresh edition of the program. I am Femi Akonde. Goodbye. <laughs>